a new market-ready photovoltaic technology will most likely completely revolutionize solar power. The new product is probably the cheapest solar cell in the world. We're talking about only two cents per kilowatt hour and also puts every other photovoltaic technology in the shade in terms of possible applications. With the same performance, only 1% of the material used in conventional solar cells is required. Most surprisingly, the new technology isn't actually a solar cell like we're used to, but some kind of coating. The solar cell that makes all this possible should actually already be familiar to those who deal with solar cells. However, new methods and manufacturing processes open up unimagined possibilities. The core idea of photovoltaics is to use sun-faced unused areas to passively generate electricity. The most widespread solar technology is silicon-based photovoltaics. Almost 90% of all solar cells worldwide are made of silicon, and there's a crucial reason. Silicon convinces with a very high efficiency of about 20 to 25% at extremely low production price. The usual solar cells are produced of wafers. These are large crystals that are cut into shape, wired and covered with a protective layer, usually made of glass. Silicon cells are literally the standard solar cell that you typically see on rooftops or in solar parks. But these solar cells are bulky, space-consuming, not very flexible, and beyond everything, heavy. Covering sun-facing surfaces such as car roofs and roller shutters with solar cells is impossible with this technology. It would be extremely complex, impractical, and financially a disaster. But a new technology seems to be a great alternative. Thin film solar cells are required for special surfaces. These are produced by applying a paper-thin photoactive layer to a substrate which could be metal, glass, or even plastic. 99% less of the photoactive material is used. The company SolarSwift has specialized in this. The technology could be used anywhere, even on the backside of your smartphone, on house roofs, in abstract architecture, and even on windows. Cities could be supplied completely self-sufficient with their own build-up area only. Many compounds can be used as the base material for these solar cells. So you can use amorphous silicone, but also complex compounds such as cadmium and telluride. Unfortunately, it hardly paid off. The efficiency of this solar technology was way too low, and there were even high legal requirements for cadmium and telluride and many others. But another already known substance can bring about the breakthrough. Surprisingly, we're talking about perovskite, a crystal which is currently the biggest competitor for wafer-based mono and polycrystalline silicon solar cells. However, perovskite is not a material, but a class of materials. There are different perovskites with different properties. Basically, the efficiency of perovskite is slightly lower than that of silicon, but this is a solvable problem. In the last 15 years, the efficiency has quadrupled from 5% up to 20%. The maximum efficiency of solar cells was still just under 25% and could not be increased during this period. If the trend continues, the efficiency of perovskite will significantly exceed that of silicon in just two to three years. According to the so-called shockley quasar limit, an efficiency of almost 33% is for both technologies the upper mark as they are both single junction solar cells. But with certain techniques, it is also possible to break these limits, but more on that later. However, perovskite has another gigantic advantage, the way the material can be used. It is literally possible to paint and print with that material. Perovskite can be processed at temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius. This allows it to be applied to almost any surface, even on plastics, which enables flexible solar cells. Depending on the type, plastic or polyethylene only melts at temperatures well above 100 degrees Celsius. And this ingenious process technology is not just theory, it is already market ready. Researchers at Stanford University 
were able to demonstrate this very impressively. A strip 30 centimeters long can be printed in just a single pass in seconds. Scaled up, it would be easily possible to produce a square meter of solar cell for just 25 cents. So if perovskite technology is so great, why isn't it widely used yet? The biggest problem with perovskite technology is that the durability is currently significantly lower than of conventional wafer-based silicon cells. Lately, perovskite solar cells only survived 1,000 hours in full daylight exposure. In the meantime, we have now reached 4,000 hours, but compared to the 20 to 30 years that conventional solar systems last, this is extremely low. So far, no perovskite compound has been found that has both high efficiency and high durability in lifetime. But perhaps this problem can also be solved by connecting several layers. Different perovskites offer different absorption spectra. In combination, even stable, long-lived perovskites with very low efficiency can break the Shockley-Quisser limit. Together, they could generate electricity more efficiently than those with the highest efficiencies. Yes, even that is already possible. There were already solar cells with an efficiency of 47.1%. The world record holder was developed by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. In theory, however, efficiencies of up to 86% are even possible. These solar cells could generate more than four times the energy than conventional solar cells that are currently available. If you want to know more about this technology, click on the displayed video. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel for free so you don't miss out on any new videos.